Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 13, mm -hmm. and it will be known as the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow because we just landed <laughs> Eric Coulson! Eric Coulson! We have composed ourselves, so. Have we though? No, not really. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you haven't heard the news, you're living under a rock with no internet. Um, Eric Carlson <laughs> traded to the San Jose Sharks. Actually, go ahead and go over all of the terms because some of it's pretty confusing. So uh, there's a lot of players yeah. and a lot of picks and a lot of conditional picks the involved. Players are straightforward. The conditional picks are very confusing so to me. Going so. to San Jose. Yes. We'll go with the easy sure. one. Yeah. Eric Carlson <laughs> and. Uh, Perron. Yes. His first Francis Perron. Francis Perron. Yes. Not David, not David Perron. Perron. Different, Different guy. Perron. Uh, Perron most likely will stay in the minors. Uh, I doubt he'll crack the lineup, and who knows if he ever will. Uh, but he'll make the Barracuda better. Um, going back to Otto, we got Chris Tierney, uh, Dylan DeMello, um, Balsers, mm -hmm. and Norris. Josh Norris. Yeah. Uh, we touched upon Josh Norris in earlier episodes. Yes. Um, and also going is a 20... 19 second round pick which is this upcoming draft mm -hmm. and then a 2020 first round pick uh the sharks do not have their 2019 first round pick because they trade that went to uh, buffalo Kane. for the evander Kane right. trade so sharks are going to be without their first and second round pick uh for the next two drafts it's not going to matter <laughs> when you finish as high as i'm anticipating we finish and uh, that that pick's going to be in the deep twenties, hopefully right. thirty first. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll see. But uh, I mean, well, that that's, picks that's one of the conditions. If yes. the Sharks uh, sign an extension to Carlson because mm -hmm. um, his contract is due at the end of the season, right. they get a second round pick in twenty. Oh, geez, twenty one. So mm -hmm. in three drafts from now, right? Yeah. And then if the Sharks go to the Stanley Cup Finals and they had signed him to an extension. It becomes a first round pick. Right. Um, the other condition is if the Sharks, for whatever reason, trade Carlson to an East Coast team this season, they get a first round pick yeah. in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, that seems very I unlikely. I don't see that happening. The only, the only likelihood that would happen is if the Sharks were selling everything and they were just a dumpster fire this year and didn't make playoffs. I mean, if, if it came down to Eric Carlson saying, you know what, I tried my time in San Jose, didn't care for it here, I need to go um, you know, elsewhere, and obviously the Sharks would prefer to send a guy like Carlson to the East because they wouldn't want to have to deal with them for um, you know future... Uh, games and whatnot, being in the the, the West Coast, yeah. so I could see that being the case, but it's just not going to happen. I mean, there's there's it, what's going to happen is we're going to get an extension done, and we'll talk about mm -hmm. um, maybe the likelihood of that extension and what the terms of that extension might be in a little bit later on um, in the show here. But uh, I I don't see him being traded this season no. to an East Coast team. I just the only thing happen. is it's going to take uh, well for the Sharks. Let's let's look at the Evander Kane trade, right? Uh, the same kind of conditions if he signed or re-signed with the Sharks right. or extended or whatever, uh, Buffalo was going to get some picks, which they did. Um, I think, and and Kane was only here for two, three months, mm -hmm. um, if you count the playoffs. So in that short time frame, he decided, I want to stay here. Yeah. And I want to stay here long term. And so he did. Mm -hmm. So now Carlson has an entire season with the Sharks and seeing what the whole area has to offer yeah. the team the management everything is going to be i mean i think any team is going to look great compared to management style compared to ottawa yeah yeah, yeah. um i mean coming from <laughs> was the, the the sit down that we were talking about just in the last episode yeah. uh where it was really awkward situation between the third pairing defenseman <laughs> and the owner of the team yeah um where they're saying you know we're we're in a really bad spot we're basically you know like in the dumps in the dumps was yeah <laughs> so um you know going from that situation to a situation like in like you're in in, in san jose where you have a team that's constantly competitive mm -hmm. um and then you add a guy like eric carlson to that i don't think eric carlson's gonna want to leave <laughs> to right. be honest so yeah. uh he'll sign an extension i'm sure um and again we'll talk a little bit more about that later on but um 
Yeah, just it's, it's looking like a really good trade for San Jose. Uh, I think you know the one piece that uh, I'm most yeah. sad about. Uh, if you want to go ahead and Chris and, Tierney, yes, yeah, Chris Tierney. Paul Paul shed a single tear for Chris Tierney I did. today. It's very sad. Uh, Chris Tierney had a very good future with the Sharks, I think. <laughs> but I mean, we talked about this before in other episodes. Yeah, I don't think he was going to get beyond the third line center. Not on this team. Just too deep. Yeah. Uh, with in Ottawa, he's got a lot more opportunities. Yes. Um, I could see him being the second line center. And maybe if Duchesne is traded, he could get bumped up to the first. I don't think Duchesne's going to last much longer on I that team, wouldn't to be, be surprised. I mean, if you're unloading Carlson, you're sending a message to your team and to your fan base. Well, they already sent a message with that awkward video earlier uh, this okay, week. Okay, so <laughs> if... if if they didn't get the message <laughs> from the actual saying, we are a dumpster fire, yeah. <laughs> then um, I guess the less obvious message of them unloading people like Carlson should should be the, the hint that they're going to be getting anything and everything that they can um, for any player that's worth anything on that team. I would expect to see Duchesne gone. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is, there's been some talk on like Twitter sphere and everything else that they don't think Doug Wilson's done yet. Right. So <laughs> it's kind of funny to think, well, what else were we looking for? Well, potentially a difference maker at the center position, the first line center. If Duchesne is that first line center position, then um, maybe we go back to Ottawa. I mean, it basically, what well, do we, we just change left? logos? <laughs> like, what do we have left to give Ottawa? No, that's true. We don't have a whole lot left, but because we're not going to want to give. I, it, what's amazing about this deal is we didn't give away Timo Meyer. Yes. Uh, Hurdle. Um, any of our top prospects, yes. Merkley probably yeah. being the top one. Although Norris was way up there. Norris I think. was yeah. up there, yeah. but he he's not a Merkley. Okay. Prospect. Sure. He's he's a guy that's going to be a solid NHLer, but not a All Star player. Yeah. No. He, and it's funny thinking about the rookie camp that we just talked about, and the two names that I had a hard time with: Chumlevsky, I think is what it was, and Chekovic. Chekovic. Yes. Um, the two CH names that I had a really <laughs> hard time with, and I, I, if you guys happen to be watching, I, I apologize. <laughs> but um, those two guys, uh, they had said, you know, sixth and seventh round picks, and and they looked like they were. Um, pushing really hard at camp and you know they wanted to show everybody that you know you're getting more than just a six round pick and the guy that was mm-hmm. picked in the seventh round I mean he's super solid looks like you know um, they came in and saved the Barracudas uh, regular season last season um, those are the guys that they were talking about having a strong camp and I didn't get to say it last episode but with the pumping up of Merkley and those two the CHs um, <laughs> I'm just gonna call them the CHs, the CHs for now I'm sorry um, with those three players being the ones that were pumped up and touted in the rookie camp, it reminded me of when we had pumped up Nikolai Goldobin and said, we think Goldobin's ready for the big show, and then he got traded. And then we said, oh, prior to that was Mirko Mueller. Mm-hmm. We pumped him up, and we think, you know, he looks like he's ready for the NHL, and he got traded. And he so is. when I see, hey, Merkley was did a, a really good job at camp, he got one assist. He's still super young. Though. I understand, but there it seemed like they were pumping up a guy yeah. to be much more than he was, and I felt like, man, Merkley might get traded here, right? So I don't know. I, I think it's a little different because yeah. Merkley was seen as the top Sharks player in that whole tournament sure. in all three games. I'm just and saying, not coming from the Sharks, yeah. coming from oh, okay. other people in the NHL. Fair enough, fair enough. But it was just that you know you've got that media out there pumping yeah. this guy, and we've seen it before, yeah. and it just feels like he might be on the way out now, um, which. We too can jump soon. in this too. Why not? But with, too soon. <laughs> yeah, but with Merkley, what's Merkley? He's an offensive defenseman. Yeah. What do we have now? An embarrassment of riches. He's going to be three years away from NHL, Fair. which would be great because that's when we'll probably see. Well, assuming Carlson signs, sure, and signs for seven years. That's just it. So right. if Carlson signs for seven, we've got Burns for how many more? Uh, five, geez. six, or. Five. He so signed a long We've got him too. for longer than three years. If you think yeah. Merkley's going to be in there in three more years, then we've got Carlson. But Merkley won't be ready for primetime action when he shows up. He's right. going to be a six, fifth, sixth defenseman. Sure. He's going to have plenty. He won't get as much ice time, but he's going to have two guys to look up to. Yes. And the Sharks will be even yeah. filthier. And we talked about last episode him uh, spending time with Brent Burns yeah. and how good that is for him. Well, now he's got two role models to, yep. to model his game after, right? Um, Carlson, arguably the much better uh, skater mm-hmm. of the two. Uh, but, I mean, my gosh, uh, what a situation to come into as as Merkley, you know, jo- joining this team and having those two guys 
um, as, as people to look up to and to model your game after. And especially since that's the style of game that you play, you play that offensive defenseman style, right? Yeah. Um, and, and you've got two of the best in the world, two of the last four Norris Trophy winners mm -hmm. uh, for their offensive style of play. Yeah, and Carlson was even a runner-up for two of those years exactly. that he didn't win. Yeah, yeah. Um, ah, it's just nuts. And it'd be a really great opportunity for him. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah. So um, let's see. We talked about the, the terms of the trade. We mm -hmm. talked about who's going where, and we talked about uh, the conditional picks as well. Mm -hmm. So what was the next thing we wanted to, to touch on with that now? Uh, the deep pairing. What is yes. that going to look like? So that's going to be tough now. And that's actually where I was talking with, with Merkley was if we have those three offensive players and mm -hmm. you're not going to want to pair two offensive players together, like Burns and Carlson probably wouldn't work out too well just because there's no defense really right there. They're yeah. defensemen, but they're offensively minded. So... Um, we had talked about maybe splitting up Braun and Vlasic, and I was hearing on Twitter and other sources that uh, that's not going to work because uh, Vlasic is the only left-handed shot out of the four of them, right? Between Vlasic, Braun, uh, Burns, and Carlson. Yeah, I'm not too they, worried about they're that. They're going to figure it out between yeah, now and then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, basically it would be on Braun to figure out how to play the left side. So you can put Braun on the third pairing? Is that what they're saying? They're talking about putting Braun on the third pairing with Dylan and playing uh. Ryan with... Um, Burns, and then having Carlson play right. with Vlasic. You also got to look at the payroll. Who's yeah. getting paid? Yeah. Braun's going to make more money than Dylan and Heed and... Braun's also got two years left on his contract. Yeah. So I'm curious to see... You think he'll be in on the years. Out? I'm curious to see in the years to come what happens with him because Braun's much better than a third line right yeah. uh a third line pairing so I mean, braun and vlasic are the best defensive pairing like, yeah we, we actually touched on this in the mm -hmm. very first episode yeah going back to the end of june uh we speculated about this is before we even knew Tavares wasn't going to be signing uh we had talked about alternatives if Tavares didn't sign a great consolation mm -hmm. prize was going to be right. carlson yeah. coming to the sharks and then we were talking about this exact How same it problem doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah, yeah it wouldn't work because the d pairings are going to be all screwed up and right. you won't be able to figure out how to who to put where and who to who to play with whom so right. um now it's happened and now yeah. we have to really i mean we have we to figure have it to out figure like, it. we're going to be the ones deciding <laughs> but um yeah, well, let's just keep talking about it. What would yeah. you do? Uh, well, I'm, I'm still kind of of the mind that splitting up Vlasic and Braun is the right play. Um, I can understand where they're going with putting Ryan back with um, with Burns because Ryan didn't have a bad year. Ryan actually was a plus 13, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I know we don't put too much weight in plus minus anymore, but it's still a telling stat. Um, I think you can play Ryan alongside Burns still and have success. I think... You can play Vlasic alongside Carlson, um, giving him the ability to really jump into the play, really be that offensive threat, and you don't have to worry about the defensive side of it as much because Vlasic's there to, to, bear, uh, to, to bail you out mm -hmm. should anything bad happen. And that <laughs> if you have a third pairing of Braun and Dylan, and that's still, they're both very defensively minded. I think Braun would carry that line. And again, oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think Braun is is given enough credit for how good he is because he plays with Vlasic, who gets a lot of the uh, the attention. Yeah. But Braun, I think, is just as good as a defensive player, and he just he doesn't get the accolades, right? So I think if you've got Braun playing on a third-line pair, and especially with another defensively-minded guy, um, maybe Dylan could learn a little bit by playing with Braun, um, picking up from how Vlasic plays yeah. right, with him. Yeah. Who knows, right? Either way, that's a dirty 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 defensive <laughs> defensive uh, lineup right there yeah. in my opinion yeah. yeah i i think i would do do it differently i would put vlasic and burns together on the top line um i would then put uh braun with carlson on the okay. second line and then dylan and ryan he yeah. whoever rotating around uh simek also yep. is pushing for a spot uh the only reason i would do that is braun again payroll you're not going to pay a guy who is a top four on any team in the yes. league to play third pairing minutes. Right. Um, I, I think ice time is going to be a big issue and not in a bad way. I think it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. uh, Burns and Carlson, before Carlson and the Sharks, used to get in about 27 minutes a game. Right. That's probably going to drop to 23, 24 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that's which we're going to talk about a little bit, is the power play. But um, I think uh, you keep those guys fresher for playoffs. Uh, their, their longevity is going to be better. They're going to get less injuries. Yeah. They're going to just, it's just going to be a better overall thing. You know, in my mind, you look at guys like Ryan Suter um, and 
You look at guys that are, you know, the, the, the Drew Doughty, for instance, and Brent Burns, too. You look at the guys that, that the number of minutes that they put up in a game, and a guy like Suter, especially, he plays half the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I wonder. Do you even need a third pairing? Yeah. Or do you just have a fifth floating defenseman in Braun? <laughs> and when you need to have a defensive pair, you put Braun and Vlasic out there? I was thinking about that earlier. I was right? like, what if we just didn't have a third pairing <laughs> and we just had two Play extra forwards yeah. and created almost a fifth line? Sure. And you have one center that rotates around. <laughs> between I think the that's fourth and probably fifth line. more than you need. And I don't know that we have the, the winger depth for that, but I mean, you could certainly have a, a just 5D. Because you know yeah. you know Burns is going to suck up a ton of minutes. You know Carlson is going to want to suck up a ton or of minutes. They get a penalty. Yeah, and they're in the box. Right, and you're down to three defensemen. That's not good. Sure. Then you would want your fourth one out. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then you've got Vlasic and Braun. You could still pair up yeah. for those situations. They don't have to be paired together for the whole game. So I mean, really, you could play the game with five defensemen mm -hmm. as the Sharks. I mean, we just got done talking about how deep this team is, and it just got even more ridiculous, right? The one thing that we uh, we maybe, again, lost out on, losing Chris Tierney, um, that center depth. So I think we'll switch to the center depth now. So we're, we're a little bit lighter with that center depth, and really mm -hmm. even just forwards in general. I think we're a little bit lighter now when we look at the, the potential lineups that we can have. But we've also, we talked about this earlier, how there's a log jam kind of mm -hmm. in a way. Like at, before the trade, there was basically the fourth line center was open. Mm -hmm. That was the only position that was really open for for uh, competition. Right now we have a third line and fourth line center open. Mm -hmm. uh, Sumelo is a guy that we've been talking about, uh, which we know nothing about. We haven't really seen him at all. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, he is a Donskoy type player, uh, playmaker. Uh, led the Swedish league, I think, in the last yes. two seasons. Um, I know at least the last season, or at least last yeah. year. He um, he. The only knock on him. I should say, is he hasn't played on NHL ice. Because mm -hmm. Swedish ice is international, international ice, yeah. so it's wider mm -hmm. and longer. So there's a lot more space. It's in NHL is a lot tighter. Mm -hmm. um, it takes, it's a, it's a different game. It's a lot more speed, I think, with the bigger ice right. um, that we see usually in the Olympics when they're not hosted yeah. in Canada. Right. Um, but um, I think he can he can challenge for it. Uh, Dylan Gambrell is another guy we talked about. Maybe Gambrell takes the fourth line center. Right. Smell takes third line center, mm -hmm. and then figure it out rotating around some other guys in there throughout the season. Or do you think that Doug Wilson isn't done? Not necessarily looking for a one C, but maybe looking for a four C. Maybe we're looking for another Eric Fair type guy to just fill in. Possibly. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that. I thought Eric Fair played very well. Admirably. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he's already on another team, but. Yeah. Someone like that, like, like we talked about, uh, one guy that I talked about earlier was Antoine Vermette, I think in oh, episode yeah. one or two. That's right. Um, I could see him as a good fourth line center just because face-offs. Yes. He is the face-off king. <laughs> I mean, he almost leads the league every season. Yeah. So just that alone on the fourth line or even the third line sometimes. Yeah. Um, defensively and on penalty kill especially, mm -hmm. that will just increase the penalty kill. And I feel like you're going to need that now with Chris Tierney gone because he brought something other than just being the third line center. And, and I mean, he was 40 points, I think is what we yeah. talked about, right? Uh, you're losing a guy who also plays uh, very well on the penalty kill. So a lot um, of tough minutes that are yeah. up for grabs right now. So does a guy like Auntie Sumella or uh, uh, Dylan Gambrell, do, do they plug in on the PK. I mean, yeah. right now you've got Logan Couture, who's a lock, right, mm -hmm. for that uh, that duty. Beyond that, Eric Carlson, or not Eric Carlson, um, Melker, Melker Carlson, Carlson. it's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Eric Carlson, Melker Carlson. There's also EK9 and EK65 now to deal with. And so. Melker 68 and oh, Carlson. Uh, uh, yeah. Eric, <laughs> Eric, Eric is 65. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and the five and the eight. The way the font is looks right. very when you're away from the ice, it looks very yeah, similar. Yeah. So I'm wondering if they're going to put their first initials they have on to, there. Yeah. yeah, no, they 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 usually do if it, they got the same last names. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, even like Jordy and Jamie Ben, I forget what they had to do because they had to do something other than just a J. J A. I think they put J A and J O. I don't know. Well, who cares? It's Dallas. Nobody cares. We're talking about <laughs> Eric Carlson being on Sharks. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I just don't know that Dylan Gambrell or Auntie Sumala could fill in to take over that role of playing on the PK. Um, I mean, they might be able to. There was one other center that we were talking about a long time ago that was known more for his defensive side. I don't think it was Sumela. It wasn't Vermeer. It was Are not. Are talking about well, in the organization? One of the prospects that we had picked up, yeah. Um, I mean, perhaps whoever that is can get Josh a shot. Morris. 
It was not Josh Norris. <laughs> I don't think they were talking about, but yeah, he's gone. So that's uh, unfortunate. But you know, when we're looking at it again, I was very, very sad to see Chris Tierney go. I think he brought a lot to the team uh, on the depth side of it that uh, gets overlooked. And um, unfortunately, I understand Doug Wilson's position. I understand what he did and why he did it. And if he had to do it again, I would absolutely agree with him. You know, yeah, he, he's he's a piece that has to get moved mm -hmm. to make this happen. When you have the opportunity to bring in a guy like Eric Carlson, and really, I don't mean to say all they're asking for, because again, Tierney to me is a big part of that team. But if all they're asking for is your third line center as a, the centerpiece of that trade, in terms of uh, yeah. the current roster players, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't know what the discussions were. They've been right. they've been ongoing. They even mentioned that they've been talking about it at the last trade deadline earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, they could have been going a lot of back and forth, like, uh, well, I'm not doing this trade unless I get this guy, and then the Sharks would be like, well, we're not going to do this trade right. if this guy's involved, mm -hmm. and then they stand pat, and then maybe that's why it took so long. Mm -hmm. And finally, Ottawa's like, okay, you know what? Forget this. We we're just gonna, we got to pull the trigger. Yeah. We got to get it done. So this is the best deal that we could get out of the Sharks because mm -hmm. they were also dealing with the Vegas Knights and I'm sure they didn't want to give up a lot of their pieces too because they just gave up a lot to get. And that's just it. See, I feel like I feel like in the same situation with um, with LA picking up, um, can't remember Kovalchuk. his name, Kovalchuk, thank you, <laughs> uh, where it was like they kind of feel felt that they weren't going to get Tavares so they picked up Kovalchuk, right? Yeah. And we were still in the running for it. Yeah. I feel like um, with with Vegas, what they decided to do was go after Pacioretty instead of going after a defenseman. Mm -hmm. And I think after they got Pacioretty, that was probably the end of it. I don't think Vegas was really that tight in the running for Eric Carlson. They did have the space. Yeah. And I also wonder if um, who's it? Bobby Ryan was oh, yeah. involved in some way. Maybe the Sharks just couldn't make it work because it's almost like a dead contract yeah. that they had to move. Yeah. Um, Maybe Vegas the same thing. They couldn't. They couldn't take it on. Right. I don't really know the whole situation in Vegas, so yeah. I don't know. But um, I, that's surprising that Ottawa hasn't been able to move that. Maybe that's a piece that goes with the Duchesne trade. If there's a Duchesne trade. Yeah, um, I mean, a team that is looking for you know a solid center um, may also be looking for a pretty decent if you can get a motivated winger mm -hmm. to go along with them. Um, it's it's unfortunate the amount of money that has to go along with that that trade, you know, bringing Bobby Ryan across, but I don't think that's something the Sharks going to have to worry about. But back to the, the the center depth at least, do you think that we fill in Tomas Hurdle at the center position? That's another possibility. Yeah. Uh, they've tried to put Thomas, he was a, a center when he was drafted, so they tried to keep him a center right. over the years. Uh, he's been, you know, <laughs> Shown as or showcased as the third line center, right? And he does okay. He didn't have great line mates. That was that's probably part of the problem. Of the problem. Yeah. Um, but he's done so well as a winger, mm -hmm. as a power forward winger, that I just I don't think it would be better for them to move him to the third line. Right. I think you have enough uh, younger guys that are up and coming. Spread that ice time around. Give those guys a chance. Yeah. And uh, we saw what Tyranny did with it last year. And mm -hmm. I think there's some players that will that will step up and be able to do that. Yeah. Um, one thing I was going to say was um, this trade almost hinges on the fact that Carlson signs an extension with the yes. Sharks. If he doesn't, it doesn't. It's not so lopsided. Now it's kind of lopsided in Otto's favor, I think, um, because we basically got a player for one year. Mm -hmm. If the Sharks don't win a cup and they don't sign him to an extension, would it be seen as a failure on Doug Wilson's part? It's kind of a gamble. I mean, I wouldn't. Maybe not. Failures may be a little too strong a yeah. word, but yeah. Um, we gave up a lot for a guy for one year. You gave up a lot of line items. That's the way I see it. You gave up a, a lot in terms of the sheer quantity of things that you gave up. Um, when you look at the the quality of what you're giving up versus the quality of what you're getting back, you always look at it, the comparison is quality over quantity. Well, we gave up a lot of quantity. I'm not sure that we gave up uh, a lot of quality. I mean, you use the, the the phrase, they're not in the same stratosphere yeah. as Eric Carlson. No disrespect to any of those guys that got traded away, especially Chris Tierney, I still love you. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's it, when you look at the guys that got unloaded to bring Eric Carlson in, there's there's no humongous name that stands out. Yes, okay, a first round pick, uh, yet another first round pick got, got sent away. If you told me that you would draft to somebody that was in the first round, 30th or 20th or whatever it is overall, if you told me that that player was going to turn into Eric Carlson, I'd say, yeah, sure, keep the pick. 
you don't know that that pick's going to turn into Eric Carlson. I'd rather have Eric Carlson over the uncertainty, quite yeah. frankly, especially when you think that having Carlson on the team makes you, what was it, the hard one in 12, one in 10? Or the so, new Vegas odds for the Sharks to win the 10 cup? 10 to 1. Ten, I'm sorry, 10 to 1. Not <laughs> one, ten. 10 to 1 odds. Yeah. I don't bet. I don't know. <laughs> 10 to 1 odds to, to win the cup. I mean, no, I put a bet down that's uh, right. um, man, a month ago, maybe mm-hmm. two months ago, and it was 14 to 1 odds. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm mad. I was mad because the opening line, I think, was 22 to 1. Right. And I missed out on it because I was a little bit late to it. Right. So I could have, I mean, this is probably before they signed Tierney, Thornton. Maybe even Kane right. yeah. when the yeah. opening line was. So uh, the Sharks looked a lot different on paper when they opened up. And if I can share one more sad tidbit about Tierney because you just brought him up again. Yeah. Um, I, I looked back on um, his his tweets and there was one tweet where he had said, back, back in Teal for two more years, he had just signed his contract. Oh, yeah. It was a couple months ago, if that. And he was like, back in Teal for two oh, more years. too. Tierney and DeMello both signed yeah. this summer. Yeah. They sign and trade. I mean, I'm not Which, as attached to DeMello, so that's why I'm right, like, yeah. but it's like, hashtag bleed teal, and I'm like, <laughs> 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 it's too bad, but yeah. whatever. Anyway, um, so let's go into uh, talking about Doug Wilson real quick, because, yeah. and I told you I was going to use this phrase uh, before the show started, I'm going to do it right now. Doug Wilson is straight <laughs> dabbing on them haters. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> stuff. Like, I mean, seriously, like, I, I, Oh, he hasn't done anything. He hasn't made any trades. Everyone else is getting better. Dabbing on them haters. <laughs> no, serious. Come on. We've been now. talking about this for episodes, the last few yeah. episodes about how he's a very patient GM. I'm going to bring in a happen. difference maker. He kept saying it was going to happen. Those talks could have been going on for weeks. Mm-hmm. And he's probably like, oh, these people just won't <laughs> stop. Like, <laughs> just wait. Just wait. Yeah. Wait until September yep. what, 13th was today. 13th? Yeah, 13th. Yeah. yeah. Lucky 13. Like, right. Episode oh, 13. Episode. How about that? <laughs> it's meant to be. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about the trades that Doug Wilson's done. Yeah. His career as GM. Joe Thornton. Yep. Three players for him. Uh, Sturm, Primo, don't know. <laughs> Stewart. Stewart. There, there you go. Stewart. Yeah, yeah, Stewart. Yeah. Who we got back anyway, but right. go ahead. Um, Joe Thornton was huge trade. Massive. Biggest trade, I think, in Sharks history. Probably, for sure. Yes. Bigger than this one, I think, yeah. still. Uh, basically, because you gave up three, uh, a defenseman and two third yeah. line, second, third line guys. Yeah. I don't know. Just nothing great. Um, Brent Burns traded Seto. Seto. Yeah. Single tier. One for one, right? And Heatley? Wasn't Heatley was involved in that? Okay, fine. Heatley, too. Whatever. <laughs> that might have been a different trade. I'll take the that same trade, team. too. Yeah. Um, Martin Jones. He got <laughs> spanked sneakily <laughs> from LA via Boston. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I, it's, uh, in fact, in fact, the day that that happened, actually, the 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 moment that it happened, where it said Martin Jones got traded to Boston, I went, Yeah, no, Martin Jones is good enough to be a starter. He doesn't want to be a backup in Boston. I bet there's another trade coming. I didn't realize it was the going to the Sharks, day, but I was yeah. going. That'd be pretty sweet if they came to the Sharks. Yeah. I didn't realize that was where he was going. I was just kind of fantasizing about it. But I mean, um, Boston made out like bandits in that deal because they got a first round for. Jones because mm-hmm. they traded Lucic. Yeah. For and so they got a first round plus Jones for Lucic. Then they traded Jones to the Sharks for a first round pick. Oh. Right. So they got two first round picks yeah, yeah, out yeah. of one player. They had three out of Lucic picks basically. in a row, I think is what it was, wasn't it? Oh, I don't remember. I think it was they had like the thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth or something like that. They had three picks in a row and the guys that they picked were not projected. <laughs> and they were like should have been second rounders. Oh uh, yeah, it was. It's, you got three first rounders right in a row like that, and then you just kind of went and did nothing with it. Um, through. I mean, hey, who knows? You know, we we'll have to take a look back and and see what those players have done. Yeah. Since then, but at least at the time, the scouting was saying those yeah. guys are second rounders. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So anyway, go on. Uh, Evander Kane. Mm-hmm. And now Carlson. Yeah. I mean, that's that's five cornerstones yeah. of a franchise. And Doug Wilson brought them all via trade. Then you add in all the players that we've developed here, mm. and you have a very strong team, very and, deep and strong team. And you just said it too. Uh, we gave up a first when we got Jones. We gave up a first to get Kane. We're, we're giving up a first, potentially two, I think it is, for, for Carlson, mm. right? I would rather have those players than the uncertainty of a first round pick. Again, let's a look late back. First round a pick. late first round pick in Goldobin, in Mirko Mueller. No disrespect to those guys, but they really haven't done anything. Mm-hmm. So, 
I'd rather have the solid, um, the, the known the good, guarantee. right? The guarantee of that player. I would rather have that. So fine, take my first round pick if that's what it means. If you're getting, uh, if you're trading away your first round pick and you're going to be a dumpster fire, <laughs> Ottawa, um, then you're in pretty bad position. I mean, hey, does Ottawa have their first round pick this this year? Uh, no, no, they, they do don't. Not. Yeah, no. this upcoming draft, they had already traded their first round pick <laughs> to Colorado. So. Unfortunately for the Sharks, because Colorado is in our division, yeah, uh, they're going to be getting a very high pick because Ottawa is going to be awful. Yes, so there's a potential that Colorado could get the first overall pick. Yeah, af- during the lottery, um, if they don't make the season. playoffs, they could get two very high picks. They could. Yeah, uh, it's going to be Colorado is going to be crazy good. Yeah, they're already they're on the cusp. But sure. they're a team that's that's borderline mm-hmm. playoff team. Um, and this is going to put them over the top yeah. because they're going to get two very, very good players next right. year. So thanks and, a lot, Ottawa. And um, so we take those first rounders that we may not be uh, using out of the picture. And let's look at what we've done without having first round picks. Well, we've got guys that are, you know, sixth and seventh round picks that look like they're about ready to crack the, you know, at least in the AHL. And like they're ready to maybe push for a fourth line spot. Yep. I mean, yeah, we could see them this year. That ain't that bad. That could be part of the rotation of, yeah. of the fourth line. Yeah. Even maybe third line. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I was going to say about those, those, what, five guys that he brought yeah. in, they were all prime age. Yes. Young or prime. None of them were, he wasn't trading these picks for a 35 year old Joe Thornton. Right. Or a 35-year-old uh, Carlson, Carlson, right? Or Burns. Or Burns. Or, yeah. like, they were all in their mid-20s, mm-hmm. um, just hitting their prime. So I think that's... that's What Doug Wilson has done is unbelievable. Yeah, I, He is, uh, once again, a top um, GM yeah. in the league. So hopefully... These guys can win a cup. Yep. And then that will solidify him getting into the Hall of Fame. So if you're one of those people saying uh, hashtag fire Doug Wilson, <laughs> yeah. um, dabbing on him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, I guess that's that's really all we that's wanted all to we say. Got. We want to yeah. do a quick episode for you guys just because, uh, you know, this just happened a few hours ago. Um, we're, we really want to get this out fast. So we just want to do a quick one for you guys. So uh, I guess that's the, the end of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add. We're good. I don't think there's been anything else in the news lately. So no. yeah, no, that's, that's it. about it. Cool. EK65, welcome uh, San Jose, buddy. Unreal. <laughs> Can't wait. Is it October yet? It's not October yet. Hashtag, Sadly, is it October yet? Hey, you know, what? let's do that. Fresh catchphrase. Hashtag, is it October yet? It's already. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Let's do it. Sure. Add it on anyway. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. <laughs> well, uh, that's the end of episode 13. Yep. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.